I grew up watching musicals from the 1930s and 40s with amazing dance numbers featuring talented performers and wonderful clothes. I learned to swing dance as a teenager and attended many reenactment dances where I got to step out in style. When I designed my 1940s swing dress pattern, I drew on those experiences to create something that is really fun to wear. If you'd like to make your own swing dress, come along with me. Let's stitch one together. So, there is a wonderful trick you can use if you want to work speedily to make your fitting twall. This is a trick that I learned years ago when I found out about Swedish tracing paper, which is really just glorified interfacing. And I learned that it's a great tool to use if you want to have pattern pieces that'll last a long time and that you can pin fit to yourself or to your mannequin. So my mannequin here has been padded out to my measurements. I've also put on the 1940s undergarments that I'm going to use with the dress I'm making including a bra and a waist center from what Katie did. So I've got everything fitted to the mannequin. She matches me when I'm in these, that's my shape. And I'm gonna show you how to pin fit an interfacing bodice. And when you tweak your interfacing pattern pieces, you've basically made a master pattern. You can retrace it if you've made major changes, but I've found I really don't need to. I just fold and mark and I'm ready to go. So let's get started. Okay, I've got my interfacing twall pen basted together. What I wanna do is draw your attention to the key areas that you're gonna to need to adjust for your own shape and your own size. Everybody's unique and nobody is symmetrical. So you wanna always go by your own measurements and your own unique shape. If you have a little bit of tummy, make sure you pad that into the mannequin before you do the skirt. The way that 1930s and 40s bodices go together is glorious. There are so many different things going on in this era. You often see things like dropped shoulders with top stitching, shirring, gathering at the bust, crisscrosses, asymmetrical finishes, cummerbund waistbands, nipped in, tied, belted. This dress has almost all of those going for it. So there's a lot to look at. This one, the back of the bodice actually comes over the front of the shoulder and is top stitched to the shoulder of the bodice front, which is gently shirred to fit into that area. It also then allows fullness over the bust and tapers into the cummerbund waistband. So what you'd need to do is check to make sure you've got enough fullness in the bust, but also that the waistband doesn't hit you down below here. You want a nice natural hug at the natural waistline. And as is immediately apparent for short-waisted me, that ain't gonna do it. This one is actually hitting way below the natural waist. The waistband needs to come up quite a bit higher so that it's hitting right below the bust. This is a gentle curve cummerbund that tapers down to the sides and comes up to the center front. So it shouldn't hit me down here on my tummy. It should hit me up here on my rib cage. It's not doing that because this is a very long waisted pattern. The original Hollywood pattern that inspired this design had a 17 inch nape to waist measurement. Just to give you context, most people, the average is around 16 to 16 and a half. On me, it's 15. So I've got to make big changes to get this to fit me correctly. Let's look at the back. Yeah, there's a lot going on here. You can see a lot of wrinkling and bunching, and that is because this is far too long. As is, this nape to waist hits across the back of my hips, which is not pretty. It needs to hit right on my natural waistline, which is two inches above this nape to waist measurement. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this back apart, unpin it, and I'm gonna use the lengthen and shorten line to simply fold to take up that two inches. If you need more room, you cut across the lengthen and shorten line and you spread your pattern pieces. If you need less room, you fold. Easy peasy. So I'm gonna simply fold and pin across so that my pattern piece reflects my accurate nape to waist measurement. Then I will do the same thing and I will fold across the same area of the bodice front because we still want our side seams to match and I'm going to take up the exact same amount. 
It won't reduce the fullness in the bust because we've still got the fullness down here around the bottom that's gonna gather into the waistband, but it is going to pull things up higher so that it hits me here instead of down here. And once we do that, we'll try it back on the mannequin, see how it looks. As my Mimi used to say, now you're cooking with gas. This is how this is meant to look on my figure. So now we have a neatly nipped in cummerbund. The way this dress goes together, the cummerbund is top stitched to the bodice. So I have folded under the seam allowance at the top and at the bottom. It's gonna be top stitched to the skirt and top stitched to the bodice. So I've got this centered on the front of the bodice. I've turned everything under neatly and you can now see it fits smoothly to the rib cage. It isn't over the top of the tummy. What I did is I took up the fold line here, matching where I took up the fold line on the bodice back. So what this did is it took two inches out of the overall length, and now, minus the seam allowance, this hits directly on my natural waistline, which is where I want it to be. This um, bodice calls for a small pleat in the back that looks kind of like a shirt waist. It is not a dart. It is actually a folded in little pleat. There's also a very tiny 1 8 inch dart at the center back of the neckline to account for the gentle slope between your shoulders and your neck. So this now fits nicely. The sleeve area, it looks a bit bunchy when it's an interface, but in the proper weight fabric, it will drape correctly and the sleeve's gonna fit in here smoothly. I also folded under the seam allowance on the shoulder where it's gonna be top stitched to the bodice front. So you can see how everything goes together. This is the crisscross. The second half of the bodice will cross about here, making a low V. And uh, then, yeah, everything looks like it's ready to roll. It's about time I had another 1940s swing dress to actually wear when we can all go out on the town again. Oh, wait, you better check this. Oh, and mine too, please. <laughs> okay, this is a delightful place. Hopefully here you can see how the notches line up. There we go. And that's going to go over the top of the shirt shoulder like this. When you reach the corner, you want to raise the presser foot and pivot to continue around top stitching. All right, so I am trying on my bodice over the undergarments I intend to wear with this dress, which is what you need to do as well. And if I do the crossover exactly as marked on the pattern, I get a V that's right here at my sternum, and that's fine. What ladies did back in the day is they'd use a brooch to fasten right here. So if you have a pretty costume jewelry brooch later, you can use that right here. Or you can do a breast knot, which is uh, like fake flowers that you pin in the middle. It's just all kinds of things you can do. I'm checking the fit around my neck. It's absolutely perfect. The shoulders are perfect. What I think I'll do on my final dress is I'm going to make sure that the shirring comes closer to this side of the shoulder rather than over here. It's kind of a hit and miss. You just have to decide what works best for you. And for me, I definitely want the fullness over this way and then it falls more naturally over the curve of the bust. Everybody's bust line is different though, so you do what works for you. Okay, then you can see where the shirring is below the bust. This also needs to come closer to the center front. And then when I sew on the waistband, the cummerbund, it's going to hold all this in nicely and finish out the side seam. I'm really happy with the way this is fitting so far. So I'm gonna go ahead and baste here and then put my cummerbund on 
and do one final try on before I am ready to cut my fashion fabric and make my dress. Okay, for this try on, I have the cummerbund sewn on. The crossover is there. This is where I found it comfortable on me and I'll probably put a little brooch right here when I'm done. This side seam is sewn together. This is really tricky to film you guys. This side seam is pinned because there's going to be a zip eventually and it was just easier to put this on if the seam wasn't already sewn up. Now, the fit I'm happy with overall, I do need these this shirring to move over this way a little bit because then the fullness, is instead of hitting right here by my armhole, is going to actually hit over the full part of the bust. So yeah, moving that shirring over will help. And I think I still need the bust shirring to move this way. Do not be afraid to disobey the marks on the pattern because you aren't me and I'm not you. And none of us are standard pattern size, at least I've never met anybody who's a standard pattern size, so do, just be brave. So these, I'm actually going to migrate a good inch over, and I'm going to have my fullness here, because the center point of my bust is here, not there. And this makes an awkward bubble to the side of the bust, and I definitely want the fullness over the full part of the bust. So I'm going to move my shirring over a little bit on the final gown, on both sides. But overall, this is a very nice fit. My cummerbund is hitting me exactly as it should across the rib cage. Overall, I'm pretty happy with where this is going. I know where I have to tweak. I will make my marks on the pattern, but I'm ready to cut my beautiful red fabric and make a swing dress. Alright, now that we're making the real dress from Fashion Fabric, we're going to do the steps with the neckline facing. So first I took up this scant dart in the center back of the bodice, and now it's time to sew the neckline facing in place. Now this is the step that gets a lot of people confused because it's not like a conventional facing. Main reason is this shoulder is going to fold under and stitch to the bodice front, and this right here is going to stitch to the front self facing. So what you're going to do after matching notches and pinning around is you're going to stitch starting 5 8 inches from the end. Okay, this is the only area where we get a 5 8 inch seam and that's this right here. But to go around the neckline, it's a half inch seam. So you're going to start 5 8 inches from the end of this facing piece, stitch half an inch all the way around to the other side, and also stop 5 8 inch from the end. I promise this will make sense when you do it. Just do exactly what the instructions say, and it'll make sense about two steps from now. You just kind of have to trust the process that it actually does what it's supposed to do. So match your center backs, match your notches, and stitch this in place. Okay, so now you can see where I stopped. And that leaves a 5 8 inch flap so that the facing can connect to the front of the bodice. And that's our next step. All right, this is what it looks like when the back facing is pinned to the front of the bodice. 
do not worry about this little area that's left over because this is where you're going to hem under the front self facing of the bodice so that is supposed to be there it's not a mistake and as you can see there it's difficult to see now because i don't have um, a different tone of thread but here's where my stitching stopped at the 5 8 inch line so now i'm going to stitch across here and join the facing to the bodice front along the 5 8 inches here making sure that i don't catch this little bitty fold of fabric so that's that you're going to do that on both sides matching your notches right sides together stick with me you can get through this part and i promise it's going to make sense when we get to the other side all right now with this facing stitched here let's flip this over and see what's going on on the bodice front Ta-da! now this little hangover bit here is going to be turned under narrowly and hemmed because that is the front self facing of the bodice surplus this this is kind of hard to show with rayon because it's so slithery but here what you've created because of the seam allowance this naturally wants to turn under now this is your drop shoulder so you see that turns under there here is your bodice front which you've run your gathering stitches that's going to be shored gently like this and then you're going to turn under the seam allowance here and top stitch so you can see you now have a smooth continuous line that goes down the shoulder pivots and stitches to the gathered bodice front so that's your next step and when you're done, you're going to shout hooray, and it's all going to make so much sense.
The sleeves as they are in this pattern are meant to be set in, so completely smooth. And if you run easing stitches and then you press using a tailor's hand, they will go in very nice and neat as set in sleeves. However, if you want to get an earlier 1940s look, bleeding back to 1939, you can simply run gathering stitches and you will end up with a small puffed head to your sleeve, which is a great look if you're trying to get that earlier time period. And that is what I'm gonna do with mine. If you wanna see how to do the set in sleeves the way they're meant to go in the pattern, you can pop over to my website. There is a very detailed step-by-step -step sew along for this dress that shows how to press and set in the sleeves. But if you'd like that earlier 30s look, stay tuned because that's what I'm going to do with these. So at long rest, after pin fitting your twall, fitting your muslin twall, and sewing, you have a beautiful swing dress, all finished and ready to wear out in the town. I'm gonna to turn it and show you the back. There are those little pleats that make for a shirt waist effect, and the ties that you can cinch in the waist. Mine's got a lapped side zipper. You can also use an invisible zipper if you prefer. And I'm gonna show you in just a second how the optional hoodie goes on. It's very simple. All you do is you put the female snaps on the inside of the facing, and then you put the male snaps on the hoodie itself, and then it just goes on and can come right back off, so you have two unique looks. For so you. this is the hoodie, which is a very simple hood shape. You can find tutorials for these all over the interwebs. Um, basically, Google Red Riding Hood tutorial or Kinsale Cloak, and you're going to find the shape that you need. I just simply took measurements for how long I wanted mine to be and how much of a drape I wanted down the back, and then I just cut it out by eye. And what I did is I stitched the seam up the center and then I flat felled the seams to make it nice and neat so there's no raw edges on the inside. That gives you a double seam across the top, which has a nice finished look to it. And then there are the male snaps just around the curve of the collar. And I'm gonna put that on now. Basically, you just find your way around matching up. I only used five snaps. I didn't find that I needed any more. It stays firmly in place with those. One at the center back. And then you've got them in the middle of the curve and here at the front. And that just stays folded out like this when you're not wearing the hood up. And it actually has a really nice look to it. You see these all through the 1930s and 40s and even in the 50s. They're not just for jackets and coats. They look great on a dress and yes, even on evening gowns. So I'll give you the back view again. There you go, that makes a wonderful drape with this rayon. And then when you wear it up, you get that beautiful hood. And at the end of the video, there'll be a little bit of bonus footage where you'll see my daughter wearing this as dark ray. We did a little 1940s Star Wars AU. I couldn't resist. You know me and my dark Star Wars heroines and heroes. So there you go. As for me, I'll be doing a turn as Agent Carter. That's a little more age appropriate for me. And it's in honor of today, which is May 8th, VE Day, Victory in Europe. So I thought it was highly appropriate to bring this out on that day. Enjoy.
That's okay. I can always cut that out. Let me just start over again.